Okay, this is going to be a story. It's not going to be any hardware, or any soldering, any oscilloscopes, anything. Uh, just some pictures and a story that I hope you'll enjoy, especially if uh, you're into vintage computing. So this all takes place around 1986. Um, and I was working at Hewlett Packard. And you can see uh, I was a bit younger then. <laughs> I'm uh, age 62 right now. So uh, that was in my youth. Uh, nice little oscilloscope I have there. Um, this is my desk. And uh, I had a nice window view. That was great. And you can see I have a lot of uh, data books. Uh, there is no internet. There is only the telephone. And uh, so you had to get all of your information from data books. So I had uh, complete sets of data books for everything I needed. And um, uh, there was no email. There was inner office memos. You put notes in um, envelopes and they got delivered around the company. <laughs> uh, pretty crazy. Uh, so just behind me, this is just behind my desk. So back then you, you got about eight feet by 10 feet or, or maybe even 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, and so you could have your own uh, desk and you could have your own workbench and they could be together. And so I could just swivel my chair around and go to my workbench and do electronics and then swivel around and do paperwork and stuff. So this is my workbench with some supplies, um, uh, parts drawers, uh, looks like I have another oscilloscope there. So all kinds of good stuff. Of course, I was working on barcode equipment at the time. This is a video about barcode equipment. And uh, these were what were called uh, HP Smart Wands. And these were RS-232 devices. So they had a DB9 connector at the end. And they had a microprocessor. And uh, they were handheld uh, barcode readers. Here's an example of some prototyping. This isn't for um, a barcode wand. It was a, a fancier barcode reader that never made it to market, but um, you can see that uh, we actually did uh, pretty crazy prototyping, uh, analog prototyping, digital prototyping. So each person had their own style of how they wired prototypes together. Uh, the analog guy liked dead bug. I liked protoboards. Um, so uh, anyway, this is kind of a hodgepodge of uh, some circuit that we were working on. One day I got a call from marketing, or I'm probably not even a call, probably the marketing guy just walked over and said, uh, you know, we've just been approached by IBM. Uh, I said, what? And he said, yeah, IBM's got this project and they sort of want us to work on it. And I went, what? <laughs> um, HP and IBM were not the best of buddies, um, but um, there was this really strange program and IBM was seriously interested in having us take a look at it. Um, so we said, yeah, okay, I guess so. Now the problem was that uh, Hewlett Packard was in Palo Alto, California, and uh, the secret labs that the uh, IBM PC was developed at was in Boca Raton, Florida, about as far away as you can get. But anyhow, we got on an airplane and we flew to Florida. My first trip to Florida or I had uh, my first key lime pie. Uh, I think I ate some alligator. Um, anyway, um, we went to a, a quintessential meeting room uh, where there were lots of people. Uh, lots of people on one side from IBM, lots of people on our side from Hewlett Packard. And they started talking and they started talking and they talked about a program where they're developing a brand new computer, a very, very super secret brand new computer. And uh, this new computer um, was about to be launched within a year. And they already had a customer for it. And this customer um, wanted to use a PC and they wanted to have this PC be part of a retail outlet. And um, it would need to be able to read barcode tags. And they knew that we had the expertise that was needed to do the barcode reading. Um, and so 
Um, they talked about this uh, system where they had a PC and they had a barcode reader and it was for videotapes. Remember videotape, blockbuster and that sort of thing? Um, they were making a kiosk. So it was a self-serve kiosk. You would walk up to this PC that was part of this kiosk and you would take your um, favorite videotape over to the kiosk and you would um, read its barcode tag. And uh, you probably read a barcode tag on your uh, Blockbuster card or whoever it was. They didn't really say it was Blockbuster. I don't remember if they ever told us the customer's name. I don't think they did. Um, but you would read your card and then you would read the, the videotapes you wanted to check out. And it would automatically do all the transactions for you. Um, so that was the program. Um, but it wasn't um, a... Uh, IBM XT, it wasn't an IBM AT, it was this new super secret IBM computer that no one had ever seen before. And so um, we discussed how we would go about designing such a thing. And uh, they weren't going to let us see the computer, and they weren't going to let us see much. Um, and then mysteriously, a book appeared. And this book was laid out in front of everyone on the table. And it was uh, obviously a technical reference for this brand new computer that they were developing. And it had all of the super secrets in this book. And so um, people kept talking about the program, but I was the technical guy in the room. And um, I asked, can I look at the book? And they looked at me and then they looked at their lawyers. IBM had their lawyers in the room. And uh, the R&D guys and the lawyers chatted for a while, and then the lawyers, I guess, said, I guess that's okay. And so I got to take a look at the book. Uh, so I slid it over to myself and opened up the pages. And inside the book, I found wonderful things. I found circuit diagrams. I found timing diagrams. I found voltage references. I found everything that you needed to build the barcode reader to interface to the keyboard port. And this keyboard port was very different from the keyboard ports I was used to. It was something different. And so I looked at these timing diagrams and this and that, and I um, thought, well, this is interesting. And so I asked a question. I said, can I take notes? Once again, they turned to the lawyers and they talked to the lawyers and they chatted for a while. And the lawyer said, yes, you can take notes. I said, OK. So I started to take notes and um, it was clear that um, note taking wasn't going to get me to where I needed to go. So I asked another question. I says, can I make a, can you give me a copy? Can you, can we make copies of the pages in this particular chapter that had all it to do with the keyboard part? And the lawyers chatted once again, and the lawyers said, no, you cannot have a copy. And I said, okay. And I went back to my notebook and I looked at the page and I looked at my notebook and it was clear to me that notes weren't going to be enough. I really needed to actually have everything that was written in this book. So I asked another question. I says, is it all right if I sit here and I transcribe all of the book page per page into my notebook by hand? Once again, the lawyers chatted and said, yes, that would be OK. <laughs> so for the next, I don't know how long, half an hour, hour, I transcribed this entire technical book, or that chapter at least, into my notebook by hand and hope I didn't make any mistakes. And uh, I don't have the greatest handwriting in the world, and uh, but I kept uh, trying to make sure I captured everything that I needed to go back to do my job, which was to design a brand new barcode interface for this computer, sight unseen, to be designed from what I saw in this mysterious book. So we went back home, and I proceeded to type up and make more sense out of what I had just all written down and uh, 
talk to other people. Um, it was going to be part hardware, which I would design, and part software, which our software guy would design. And so uh, we developed uh, a hand-wired board. This isn't it, but this is another uh, another uh, barcode project that we had worked on at one time. You can just kind of see our techniques for uh, putting things together. Uh, but anyway, we built a little hand-built widget, kind of in a little plastic proto box, maybe about two inches by four inches by six inches, something like that. And a couple wires, one wire went to a barcode wand and one wire went to the keyboard interface of the computer and one wire went to their keyboard. So it was a go between. So when you read the barcode tag, it would disconnect the keyboard and then it would pretend to be the keyboard. And then when it was done, it would reconnect the keyboard again. So we felt fairly confident about our circuit. And so we went back to Boca Raton, Florida, where we met again, once again, in the mysterious uh, room with the same people and we talked. And I showed my little box and I said, can we try it out? Can I see the computer? And they said, yes. Um, and they said, it's in a room. And uh, no one seemed to have a key for the room. So it took about a half an hour for them to find the right person who had the key to the room. And uh, so we went down this hallway and there was this door and they opened up the door and it was a small little room. It couldn't have been more than about six feet by six feet. It was a small little room. And all that was in the room was a table and the computer. And I thought, oh, well, I'll finally get to see the computer. Um, but what they had done is they had wrapped the entire computer with black trash bags <laughs> and duct taped the black trash bags all over this computer. So all I could see was the front of the CRT. All I could see was the text, the screen. I couldn't see the shape. I couldn't see the keyboard. I couldn't see nothing. Right. And they said, hand me the cable. And so I handed the cable into the cable and they went behind the computer and plugged it in. And then I read a couple of barcodes and lo and behold, they came up typed on the screen and they unplugged the cable. They said, thank you. They closed and locked the door. And that was it. Uh, we went on our way back home. Um, so successful trip, I guess. Um, we finally decided to build the product as a real product. And so we made PC boards and uh, did our due diligence in the real design. Uh, uh, we, we, I, I've showed you this in another video. Uh, we actually made the entire uh, circuit board to, to support this product. Um, and uh, it got uh, christened the key wand because it was a keyboard and a barcode wand together. So it was the key wand and it became a product of, of Hewlett Packard. Um, around, um, I don't remember how much time elapsed, but it was, uh, you know, a good part of a, of half of a year, maybe more. Um, IBM finally announced this brand new secret computer that they had been working on. It was the PS2. Uh, the PS2 was released in April of, uh, 1987. And, uh, uh, I had seen the secret manual and talked to the guys who designed this thing and, uh, uh, built a barcode reader sight unseen to work on a uh, IBM PS2. I uh, later, of course, uh, when you could buy them, I, I was one of the first at Hewlett Packard to have an IBM computer sitting on my desk. Uh, so here's my bench once again, and there's an IBM PS2 Model 50 uh, sitting on my bench, <laughs> which I used for the development of uh, the product. But uh, it was actually a nice computer. Um, it was one of the nicer ones of the day in 1987, and uh, it became my 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 personal computer. Uh, everybody else was using their little uh, I, uh, HP something or others, and uh, uh, I had my uh, IBM PS2.